Kirk's guitar playing and songwriting has influenced generations of musicians, and Johnny B. Good has been covered by a diverse group of musicians, from the Beach Boys to Peter Tosh and to these dudes in leather called Judas Priest. Hi, and welcome to my lesson on Chuck Berry's Johnny B. Good. I'd like to start things off by talking about the equipment I used. Uh, Chuck usually used a Gibson ES-335 or some other kind of hollow or semi-hollow body guitar. So I used my Gibson ES-333, uh, which is like a poor man's 335. Um, I swapped out the original pickups for a pair of Gibson Classic 57s. Uh, the guitar was strong with Diodario 11, so a little bit of a heavier gauge. And I had the guitar set on the bridge pickup to give it a bit more bite. For the amplifier, I used a Fender Hot Rod Deluxe. Chuck probably used some kind of Fender amp turned up loud. Uh, so that the amp was breaking up or distorting. I recorded at a low level, so I had my amp running clean, and I used uh, Rocket Pedal's Blue Note Overdrive to mimic that overdriven amp sound. Okay, and with all that geeky stuff out the way, let's get on with the lesson. I'm going to start with the intro. The song's in the key of B flat. If we play a B flat major chord in the sixth position, like this, that's kind of the home base for the whole song or the root chord of the song. It helps to visualize this chord as we play this song because um, a lot of the lead work is, is based around that chord. And that will also help us transpose the song. The song is actually often played in A in kind of guitar bass bands as well. So it's good to be able to visualize that chord. It'll help you transpose it. The first part actually slides in and outlines part of that chord. This top part, this little B flat triad. So what we're going to do is we're going to slide into the seventh fret. I'm using the second finger on the third string. Then I go into the second string and go six, eight. That's with the first and third finger. So we get that comes in on the end of three. So one, two, three. Okay, then we start with the slidey part. We go. So I'm borrowing the top two strings, sliding from the fifth fret to the sixth. drum ends up on beat one. We put that together we get okay and for a lot of that I'm using down strokes with the pick. The next bit as soon as I hit that last double stop I go into this little single note run which starts in the ninth fret of the second string with the little finger. So that was nine eight, six on the second string. Then I'm going to go into the third string. Okay, I'm kind of outlining part of that chord. Then I finish with two notes on the fourth string of the eighth fret there. So, after that we run into some double stops on the fifth and fourth string. I'm using the third finger, sliding into them a little bit. And I'm playing two strings at once here. Again with down strokes. Okay, so so far we got this. Okay, next we're going to use another double stop, sliding in again into part of this chord here. I'm using the first and third finger, first and second finger I should say, sliding in. And then I added the third finger to the second string there and took it off again. So then I'm going to trick it up slide. It's a little greasy slide into the fifth fret of the third string on the 6th fret, finish off with two notes there, so on the 4th string, 8, 5, I'm using little finger and 1st finger, so, okay, at that point, the band comes in, okay, so the next four measures, uh, Chuck does one of his classic string bending kind of licks, it starts off with a bend on the 8th fret of the 3rd string, I'm using the 3rd finger, then he plays the second string on the sixth fret, single note. So one, two, and three, and four. Okay. Now he plays double stops. He plays the top two strings. So I'm barring across the first and second string again. It's all this sixth position. Then another bend, second string, 
Okay, so do that all in its entirety. This is two measures. Okay, and I play that twice, that whole thing twice. Moving on to the last four measures, some cool stuff in there. Start off with that bend again. Now we're going to go... So that was the first string of the eighth fret, first finger. Now I'm on the second string. Okay, and then we're going to go on to the first string again. Come down those same set of notes on the second string. So we put that together, we got... Then we go on to the eighth fret of the third string. I'll do that one more time. So we've got that bend. Now here we got some cool stuff. We've got... I slide into the seventh fret again with the second finger outline. The next chord again, we got. I'm doing some sweep picking or a rake, whatever you want to call it. So we're gonna go. You want those notes to be separate sound and not just a quick strum. So kind of bottom across the top two there to get smooth second fingers uh, sorry the little finger is coming onto the second string at the ninth fret doing a pull off onto the third finger on a fret lower the eighth fret then double stop sixth fret first two strings with the first finger and we're throwing in that bend on the third string and doing the double stops again and then we're going to double stop the second and third string at the eighth fret then at the sixth fret with a hammer on onto the third string and then finishing with the root note b flat here on the fourth string at the eighth fret okay so we got i'll maybe take it from the little rake thing four measures goes like this. And that's the whole of the first solo. So I'd like to talk about the rhythm part. Um, the song is based on just three chords, a one, four, five progression. What that means is in the key of B flat, We've got the one chord, the root or the home position chord, B flat. The four chord would be one, two, three, four. I'm going up four notes of the major scale, so this is E flat. And then the five chord, one, two, three, four, five, is F. Now Chuck plays one of his classic rhythm parts, kind of based on a power chord. You can even fret a full seventh chord, which can be fun sometimes, but we can maybe just keep it simple for now and do a power chord. So this is first finger on the sixth fret of the sixth string, third finger on the fifth string at the eighth fret. Now what I'm going to do is pump the little finger onto the fifth string at the tenth fret, and that happens on beat two and beat four. So we get one and two and three and four and, and that's one measure of music. So off the top of the verse, we need to do that four times. One and two and three and four and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So after we've done four bars of the B flat rock and roll kind of riff, we're gonna move down a string. So this will be our E flat chord. We're playing a power chord kind of shape. And we are doing the same thing, but everything's just moved down one string. <laughs> So that will be two measures of that. Okay, then we're back to the one chord, the B flat. Okay, and then we're gonna go to the eighth position. So this will be the F chord. I've moved down a string, I'm now in the eighth position, doing the same thing. So that 
those two measures and then we go back to the one chord. On the intro guitar solo, it's a little bit different from the verses. So um, the band comes in on the four chord. That's where the string bending is. And the when we get to the five chord, the F, we go down to the four chord. So that's one measure each, and then go to the one chord at the end. Whereas the verses, we stay on the five chord. So it's a 12 bar blues kind of progression. We've got four bars of the B flat chord. We've got two bars of the E flat chord, two bars of the B flat chord, two bars of the F chord back to two bars of the B flat chord. So 12 in total. Um, I'd like to finish this, the first part of this lesson with the little lead fills that you hear in the chorus part. So we're going to do this four times. It's a double stop lick starting um, with the first finger on the ninth fret here and the, and the second finger on the tenth fret here. We're going to slide into that. Now for that last strum, I added the third finger to the second string, the eleventh fret. We do that four times and then we do it one more time with a little bit of a different ending. That's a double stop on the 8th fret, the first finger is barring these two strings. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that lesson. Uh, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, there will be more free stuff coming. Thanks a lot for watching.